Did I just strip this on my shirt? Hi everyone, this is Tashina from Logical Harmony. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys aren't familiar with me, I talk about cruelty-free and vegan beauty products. That's what all my videos are about, as well as my website, logicalharmony.net. Today I'm going to be doing a chatty get ready with me using a lot of products I've not used before and some products that I love and I just haven't really used on camera really ever, if not at all. So I'm really excited to share this video with you guys. Leave a comment, tell me what your new favorite product is, and just just keep watching if you want to see how to get this look. To start with, I'm going to prep my skin with the Complexion Rescue Defense from Bare Minerals. This is a radiant protective veil. This is the shade Soft Radiance, and it does have SPF in it. It also says that it helps block blue light damage, which is this like the light from your phone and your computer screen. And this is like the first product that I've ever used that claims that. I'm looking through the claims right now. Um, it says it helps hydrate, helps with skin radiance and luminosity, more even looking skin tone, reduced appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. I don't see anything about the blue light though. So I'm not really sure exactly what the benefits of that are, but I'm gonna put this on. I did swatch it on my hand. I haven't put it on my face yet and it looked really nice it just did have a really nice soft luminance to it. They do have a few shades. And one thing I did notice, and I don't know if this is picking up now, but because it is like a mineral sunscreen, it is a little bit light on the skin, but if you massage it in more, I think it goes away. That's what I noticed on my hand at least. So I'm hoping that's the case. I did pick a foundation that's a little bit, I don't want to say it's too dark for my skin, but it is like a shade darker than what I would need right now because I wanted to balance this out. I feel like on camera, you're seeing a lot more of the lightness, whereas in person, it's pretty much blended in. So that is really good to know. It feels nice though, and it does leave your skin really dewy. It's not like full dewy, but it's pretty dewy. It's pretty nice. It feels good. It feels hydrating. It feels like a night cream. Like that's the amount of hydration it feels like. Oh, and it's already dry. It's not tacky. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this Kona eye stick from First Aid Beauty. They just sent this to me as well. And it is an under eye and lid primer. Oh, that looks kind of sparkly actually. Let's try this out. So this is supposed to help with, what does it say? I think it's moisture. Yeah, it's a hydrating and depuffing stick. So it has the Kona in there from coffee to help depuff and then hydration. I'm gonna put some on my lids as well, cause why not? I just got my brows microbladed six days ago. So they are starting to peel. So if you're seeing a little funkiness, that's what that is. I apologize, but there's nothing I can do about it. Um, you just let it do its thing. So my brows are gonna be peely in videos for a little bit. After that, they'll look great. I think they look really good. She did a really good job. This feels nice. I don't know about deep puffing, but it does feel like it added some moisture. It's very thin and it doesn't feel tacky. It doesn't feel greasy or oily. A lot of under eye primers feel very greasy to me and I just, I don't like them. So that actually feels really nice. We'll see how that works with the concealer and stuff. So I'm going to be using the First Aid Beauty Hello Fab Bendy Avocado Concealer. I don't know why it's called Bendy Avocado. Let's read up about it. So it's superfood infused. So it has avocado oil, vitamin E, mushroom extracts to help hydrate, condition, and soothe, and caffeine to help with under eye puffiness and circles. It comes in seven shades. I think it should come in way more. I appreciate that it is not seven shades of pale or seven shades of white. There are some darker shades in there, but they should definitely add a lot more. I think that's one thing they could do to make this concealer a lot better. I haven't used it yet, so I'm not sure what it's like. I'm gonna use the shade four to spot conceal today because I am using like a lighter weight foundation. And you guys can see if this is shade four and there are seven shades, that kind of gives you an idea of the shade range. They're not all like this, but still it could definitely be improved on. I've heard the formula is really good though. And I think that is frustrating because it should be available to more people. Hopefully they take that feedback and listen to it. This is like their first ever concealer, so maybe they just kind of wanted to test it. I'm not really sure. I could see how as a brand it would be tough to know how things are gonna perform, like if you launch a concealer or a foundation, but still you should have it available to as many people as possible because that's gonna let as many people as possible give you feedback and that's incredibly important. And just being inclusive with your products is super duper important as well. I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation in six medium. I've not used this yet. I've heard this is amazing. It is a lighter coverage foundation from what I've heard. 
but we're just gonna go in with it. And I'm going to do, what is this? It's a Beauty and the Base brush from MOT. Let's try that first, because I feel like with a foundation that's light coverage like this, a brush might help give it a little more coverage than the Beauty Blender, which is gonna kind of pull away some extra product. How's your guys' week been? What have you been up to? What's What's exciting in your life? What's new? Tell me, leave me comments and tell me all about what's going on with you. This is actually really nice. I feel like this is very, very light coverage, but it's more coverage. I mean, it's a foundation. It's more coverage than like a BB cream. Sorry, I have to be careful around my brows. It's more coverage than like a BB cream or a CC cream. And I do appreciate that. I'm not supposed to like put makeup on my brows in any way or rub them at all. And it has made applying foundation a little bit tricky, but that's okay. I'm gonna add a little bit more. That's really nice coverage though. I feel like it looks like my skin, but just a little more improved and more even. And it does have a nice radiant finish to it too. I really, really love the um, Charlotte Tilbury primer that's in this packaging. I think those would be really nice together. I feel like that with the Bare Minerals is really good too because the Bare Minerals does have a lot of glow to it. I think this foundation does as well. And I think applying it with the brush was the way to go. So for under my eyes, I'm going to use that same First Day Beauty concealer, but in shade three. Hopefully this is light enough. And I've noticed the concealer does have some like peachy tones to it. And so I think they definitely made it to be more of an under eye concealer versus a face concealer because that peach is going to help cancel out any darkness and whatnot. I still feel like they need to improve the shade range. I'd say too, when you have feedback like that for brands, I think it's really, really helpful to let brands know like, hey, I want to buy your product, but you don't have a shade for me. And that's really important feedback for brands to get. I think a lot of times people, brands, whatever, they live in their little bubbles and they don't necessarily realize like who their customer base is or could be and who they're missing out on. So I think giving them feedback is really good. Might need a little bit more. It's not super full coverage. It's not light coverage. I don't think it even claims to be full coverage actually, but I do like the formula. Like it looks really good. It really reminds me of the Naked Concealer from Urban Decay. That's what the formula definitely reminds me of, um, both in coverage and consistency. Okay, I'm going to do cream blush. I don't think I ever really do cream blush. What do I wanna do? It's from Juice Beauty. So I have flush, which is pretty, but I think I'm gonna go with this one, which is Orange Blossom. I'm just gonna put that on my beauty blender. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. So going back to my brows, have you guys had your brows microbladed? If you have, what was your experience, especially with the healing process? Did you like it? Are you happy you did it? Are you sad you did it? I've seen quite a few people lately saying that they're sad they did it, and I think it's for a variety of reasons, but I'm always curious about that. I'm so far, like, I'm really happy. It's only been six days, so we have another touch-up session. I think she did an amazing job. She was really nice. The whole process was really helpful with her, like, telling me what she was going to do and stenciling it out, and she just was constantly checking with me about the shape and the color and things like that, and I just really appreciate, like, that over-communication. I think in situations like that, it's really important to over communicate and I think she did a great job. So I'm going to be using the Caney Botanicals Galaxy Milk Illuminating Beauty Oil. I realized, so I've had this for a while and I've used it off camera, but I've never used it on camera. And so I wanted to work in more products that either were brand new to me or that I just don't use on camera much or have never used on camera so you guys could see them. This stuff is really pretty though. I'm going to apply it Oops, with my beauty blender. It is really liquidy though. I think that's the only thing. So be Kind of careful with that because it gets messy. It's kind of tricky to work with for that reason. Just gonna dab that on and then I'm gonna blend that with my beauty blender. And I'm not sure if you have oily skin, I'm not sure honestly how this would work for you because it is more of like a serum consistency. It's not like your typical liquid highlight. It kind of smells like laundry detergent in a way or dryer sheets. Um, it's very like fresh and subtly floral. But yeah, you just need like the tiniest bit and it will get so much of your face. This stuff lasts forever for that reason too. Like I feel like you could get away with like a little sample bottle and you'd be fine. It's really pretty it's on its own. You can mix it with foundations. You can mix it with like your lotion if you want like a body luminizer. Yeah, so this is definitely a very liquid highlight more so than a lot that I'm used to. I feel like most have a thicker consistency. 
just really going in there with this today. So I've been into super, super dewy makeup looks. Because of that, I've been adding more highlight than I have in the past. So I'm going to set my face. And honestly, I thought about using a new to me setting powder, but I'm so picky about setting powders that I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to stick with something that I knew. So I'm going to use the Au Naturel finishing powder and I'm using the MOTD Perfect 10 brush, which they just launched a few new brushes and they sent them to me and I've been using them and I really, really like them. I really like them. I think this is such a great shape for a powder brush. I've been using it all week, so it is it is dirty and needs to be washed, but it's this nice dome shape and I just, I really, really like it. So I feel like they did an amazing job. If you guys are curious, I do have an affiliate code with MOTD that'll get you a discount on your order. I'll just mention that down below. And one thing I really, really like about this setting powder, and I know I've talked about this setting powder so many times before, is I feel like it blends really well with pretty much any foundation and it just, it still lets your skin shine through, but it makes it look more even and poreless, which I find so interesting about it. It's not super mattifying. It doesn't really like, it doesn't change the color of your foundation in any way, but it just helps like smooth everything together. And no matter what foundation I use it with, it always does that. And I really, really like it for that reason. This is such a nice go-to setting powder of mine for that reason. I just know no matter what I'm using it with, it's going to look good, it's going to blend well. And I think the packaging is really nice too because it's very, very easy, especially for travel. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You don't have to worry about it like popping open and spilling powder everywhere. But if you guys don't have this, you need it. Just trust me. So for bronzer, I'm also not trying a new one. I just don't, I haven't gotten new bronzer bronzers in a while. So I'm going to use the Au Natural Kissed Bronzer on the second skin stipple brush from MOTD, which is again, one of their new brushes. I really, really like it. It just is so nice. I don't know. I feel like with this, with these new additions, they really like rounded out their collection and really filled in some gaps. And I think they did a good job of picking which brushes to choose. They also picked, this one's also dirty, but a highlighting one that is really nice and works really well. And they did a couple others too, but I am loving the new powder brush. Oh yeah, they did a new foundation brush, um, which is also really nice, but I am super into this. This one and the powder brush are like my favorites right now. Okay, I'm glad I went with a little bit of a darker foundation than I thought I would need because it did really balance out that Bare Minerals stuff, especially on camera. In person, it looks normal and fine, but on camera, it's definitely a lighter shade. So I think that is important to note. This does appear to have a little bit of flashback in it. I bet if you wore it underneath like a more full coverage foundation, it wouldn't, but I am still noticing that on camera. Also, apologies about my nails. I'll, I'll get to those. That is face makeup. I'm not doing my brows. This feels so weird to not be doing my brows. Until they heal, I have like another week until I can wear brow makeup, but honestly, I don't even know if I need to after that. Maybe if I wanted to a little bit, because any areas that I'm seeing right now that look like they might need it, it's just because they're peeling. I'm so excited to see what they look like after my second, like my test of touch up session. So excited to see what they look like after that. So for eyes, I'm going to be using the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz Crystal Gemstone Palette. They sent me this recently and I'm really excited to use it because it looks gorgeous. It's a mix of matte shades and shimmer shades and some look like they're more like foiled and more these ones like on the outer side on the outer side. These ones on the outside are more like a sh standard shimmer and these ones on the inside look more like a foil. I'll probably post a photo on Instagram of swatches of this. It looks so pretty. Let's go in with just this nude shade. This pigmented. Lay down a base there. I will say too, like trying to be conscious of my brows healing, I'm not sure how far to take eyeshadow up. I'm trying to be so meticulous with my aftercare because aftercare is so important with stuff like this and really like be aware. I want them to heal well and I want them to heal easily and quickly. So I'm not gonna take the shadow up. I don't think I'll highlight my brow bone. So that is blended. That's a really pretty nude. It's a little bit rosy. I thought it'd be like more tan, but it might just be my skin. Okay, let's go in with the slightly darker shade, which is, I kept the box for this reason. There we go. Okay, so I used sandstone and now I'm going to go in with Scorpio. Put that in to my lid. I like that the purple is coming through on that one. Have you guys used this? Do you have it? Let me know if you do. Let me know what you think of it. I feel like I've been seeing it everywhere lately and so I'm really curious what you guys think of it. What do I want to do? I kind of like, oh, do I want to do that one? 
Let's see what that looks like. Can I do that? Do I want to do that? That one. That is like so typical me. I'm gonna go with this one like on the center. My lid maybe. Okay, that formula seems really nice. Really buttery. There we go. That is nice. So my understanding, so Aether is like a one woman company, which is amazing. And my understanding too is that she wanted to make products that were better for you, but that still like performed as well as their high-end counterparts, which you guys know I always appreciate. When it comes to like vegan, Bagheera, you object to that? Bagheera objects, I don't know if you guys could hear that. When it comes to like natural beauty products, which you guys know not everything I use is natural, but I really think everything should perform the same as the higher end because that's gonna get more people interested in realizing that like cr cruelty-free beauty works, vegan beauty works, natural beauty works. And so I think it's really important to showcase that in products. And so I really appreciate that that was basically her mission is to show that you don't need to use all these chemicals to have great high-performing eyeshadows. And I think like Oh Naturel does such a good job of that and I really like their eyeshadows and I really love that Aether seems to have like the same mentality of like, it can be natural and have really good ingredients, but it should still perform. And you guys know that's basically my stance about vegan products too, is they need to still perform. I need something. I'm gonna pop a little bit of, so that was Aura that I used. I'm gonna pop a little bit of Heartstone right onto the center of my lid to open up my eyes a little bit more. I really like these shimmers. I think the two mattes that I use don't have as much pigment as I was hoping for. That might just be the shades though. I don't know if I'm gonna swatch them all, like I said on Instagram. They blended out really nicely. They're very pretty. I was just hoping they'd be a little bit more pigmented, but the shimmers and the foils are really, really nice. I'm quite happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and blend underneath my eyes a little bit. And I really like the mix of shades in this palette too. I think it will kind of like please everyone and work for everyone. I really wanna play with that one. At some point, what color is that? A stare. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call this good. I'm just gonna use my own Naturel pencil liner, my lash line, just a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna use a mascara I've been using that you guys have not seen on camera. And I'm just doing like the thinnest line of liner ever. Baby liner, baby liner. So I'm going to use the Hourglass Caution Mascara, which I've been using a lot and I really like it. Um, I did post like an Instagram review of this. I felt like the formula, as it's been open, the formula has gotten better. The first couple times I used it, I wasn't like blown away by it. But I'd say starting like the third use, the f just as it seemed to like thicken up, it just seemed to get really, really good and it does give good volume, it does give good length. I feel like it gives more length than it gives volume, and I've continued to feel that way. That's what I said in my Instagram post, but it's been a few weeks since that, and I continue to feel that it just gives more length and volume, but it's a really, really pretty mascara. I like it, and I think it's a good one if you want like a versatile mascara that you can use for any type of look. You can obviously build it up if you want more volume, and that will work just fine, but I just think it's real nice. I'm very happy with it. They did send it to me. I won some like contest on their Instagram that they were doing where like you entered and you could win it and I won it and I was pretty happy about that. And I love Hourglass. I'm so excited that their goal is to be 100% vegan pretty soon actually. And they've been actually reformulating a lot of their products and making more and more of them vegan. And I think as I get mascara myself, um. I think that that's really amazing that they're following through with that. And their new releases are mostly vegan. I think there's been one new release this year that hasn't been vegan, and it was something that was already in the works last year, and that's why. But the fact that they've been like hitting up their old products and reformulating shades, reformulating products, and actually following through on making things vegan is really, really cool to see. Um, I feel like there have been a few brands that have said they're going to go vegan by X date. And you know, things are more complicated than that. I think they mean well when they say that. And then business-wise, it's just a lot more tricky and complicated. But it's really cool to see that Hourglass seems to be like pretty aggressively converting things to vegan. 
So if you've not checked it out yet, I do have a list of their vegan products on my website, Logical Harmony. I'll link to that down below, but it's definitely growing. Like every month I'm adding new stuff to it and I just, I love that that's possible. Even if they aren't releasing anything, I'm still able to add new products. Just blur that out a little bit. Kind of just looks like a freckle. That works. Put a little more highlight right there. And then for lips, I'm going to use the LH Cosmetics Fantastic Lipstick in Pink Opal. Which I wasn't sure about before this look, but it's gonna blend well with this eyeshadow. This lipstick feels like a lip balm. So I'm gonna use the Pacifica Rose Flower Hydra Mist. Ooh, kind of an aggressive spray there. I feel like this all worked really well together. I'm really impressed with the coverage of this foundation. I feel like it looks really nice. It doesn't look like I'm wearing foundation. And I really like this concealer from First Aid Beauty, actually. Again, it needs a better shade range, but I think it looks really nice. It blends really well. It's laying really well. I wanna try it without this because I'm curious how much is the concealer versus the primer. But even where I put it on my face to spot conceal, you can't tell there's product there. It's blending so nicely. So I did really like this. I wanna play with it more for sure. And like I said, I will post a photo on Instagram with swatches of all the shades so you guys can see that. Yeah, if you guys have used any of these products, leave a comment let me know what you thought of it what have you used recently that's new to you that you've really liked comment let me know and I'll see you next time